So starting with resting state fMRI, so this is a big field uh, that Dr. Biswal actually started where uh, the subject, the patient lies inside the fMRI or MRI scanner and he does nothing in particular. So his mind is wandering uh, like uh, it's like he's not doing any specific task. Uh, maybe he's thinking about food and then he's thinking about something else, thinking about a person that he met, some, met somewhere and so on. And then when you do this, you get a 3D signal, a 4D signal. So what the MRI scanner records is this 4D signal that you see over here. So that's basically three dimensional brain across time. So that's four dimensional, right? Three dimensional brain across time. And then uh, this signal can also be visualized as follows. So this is your three dimensional, uh, your four dimensional signal. You can see it as a three dimensional volume, your three dimensional brain as a volume. And then every, uh, so it's, it's divided into what is called voxels. So in two dimensional image, you have something called as pixel. But here in 3D, you have a voxel which is called volumetric pixel so that's that's voxel and uh, every voxel can be uh, thought to have a time series so this is the time series corresponding to the voxel and this is basically the fmri signal that you have okay now what what is this signal actually what does this actually mean so this is what is called as the fMRI bold signal. I'll just walk you through uh, the basics of what this signal is. So let's say you have the neuron over here. This is your neuron. This is your astrocyte, which is a coupling agent in some sense between the neuron and the blood vessel. This is your blood vessel. And what happens is, let's say we will measure the amount of oxygen that is in the blood uh, with respect to a baseline level here. Okay, so I'm going to plot uh, the bold response what we say blood oxygen level dependent response which is nothing but the amount of oxygen in the blood with respect to some baseline across time. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So let's say the neuron gets activated over here due to some stimulus something got this activated. So that's your stimulus at time t equal to zero. Now, uh, what happens is neuron requires energy uh, which comes from oxygen. So to get activated over here, it requires some energy that comes from oxygen. And because of that, you can see that there's an initial dip in blood oxygen level uh, over here. So there's an initial dip and then uh, what the brain does is the brain overcompensates the oxygen demand or the oxygen supply in that particular region. So you see that wherever the, the neuron was activated, the brain uh, gives a lot of oxygenated blood in that particular local region because of this, this particular signal like increases, the bold response increases and it goes to a certain peak and then slowly, uh, if the neuron is not activated for a long time, it will just slowly come down and come back to the baseline. Okay. So with response, so whenever a neuron is fired, you see the bold response as follows. So if there were, let's say, two signals, uh, the, the neuron fires two times, you'll see this particular wave two times and so on. If they were... Uh, if they were apart, I mean, if they were away for a duration of time, right? So, so that's what this particular signal over here is. So let's say there's, there's this going up. That means there was, there was some neurons that fired over here because of which this signal went up and then it came down and so on. So that's, that's your bold response. Okay. So this is the signal that we are measuring from the brain.